Welcome to Music in Mind with Anthony Calkins. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about how some of the different types of music deal with political messaging and the interesting ways that music can embed powerful messages with varying degrees of abstraction. Here are a few examples of some overtly political pieces of music that I find particularly powerful or interesting. So let's begin our look into political statements in music by going all the way back to 1882, when the composer, Beethoven, began his work on his heroic symphony, which was dedicated to Napoleon, who Beethoven considered to be a great man, working towards bringing down old political systems of monarchies and entrenched aristocracy throughout portions of Europe. Of course, the story goes that when Beethoven got the news, that Napoleon had crowned himself emperor, Beethoven erased his dedication to Napoleon and changed it to a more general dedication, reading, to celebrate the memory of a great man rather than the specific great man who was Napoleon. What's interesting about this, besides that he erased Napoleon's name so fervently from his manuscript that he wore a hole in it, is that Beethoven retained the idealistic political messaging of this work of music while removing the specific person he had in mind while he was writing it. It's also interesting to think about this from a modern perspective because we're used to listening to songs with words, of course, and this symphony is entirely instrumental. So to think about a, a piece of instrumental music being so politically laden is sort of... Um, might be sort of foreign to us, but for Beethoven this was this was a strong statement. Now let's move ahead in time to discuss an American folk singer, Peggy Seeger. Folk music in the U.S. from the 1950s onward was rife with overt and explicit political messaging and material. But Peggy Seeger is an interesting case because she comes from sort of a musical dynasty uh, in terms of her family. Her mother, Ruth Crawford Seeger, was an incredibly important American composer of classical music, and she was also the first woman to ever be awarded a Guggenheim Fellowship. Peggy Seeger's father was a renowned musicologist, and Peggy Seeger's brother, Pete Seeger, is probably one of the most important names in American folk music. So what I'm going to talk about today is a song of hers called Engineer, which tackles the idea of women's rights in the workforce uh, at the time. And it is a, it, it's a long and pretty explicit narrative of a girl growing up wanting to be an engineer and her family tells her she can't do that and she goes to school and she's told that she can't do that. She has to learn typing and to be a secretary and she gets a husband who is an engineer who tells her she can't do that because she has to stay home and raise the children and eventually because of financial needs she gets a job as an engineer and even in the workforce she's not treated with equal respect or given equal pay or any of that. And so it's sort of this, it, it's a tale of the struggle of a woman trying to be taken seriously in a field that is male-dominated, which is, of course, an issue still relevant in a number of fields today. Typing is a skill that every girl should need to while away 
the extra time until the time to breed. Then they had the nerve to say, what would you like to be? I says, I'm gonna be an engineer. What's interesting about this piece of music um, is both the composition and the lyric work. The phrasing is sort of interesting. It's kind of off kilter. There are three measured transitions when it feels like there should be four. But more powerful than that, of course, is the lyrics, which are just completely overt and explicit in what they're talking about, which makes them extremely powerful, I think. Because, it, I mean, it could almost be an essay on women's rights, which means that it, it, which means that it creates a, a detailed picture of what the problem is and what the solutions to that problem might be. So the next song I want to talk about is a song by the band Rage Against the Machine, who is sort of known as this bastion of political resistance in music of the 90s and is part of sort of a rap rock scene. Sometimes they're called new metal. They, they kind of bridge this gap where there, there were a lot of bands at the time with a lot of political messaging like Rage Against the Machine, System of a Down, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, but the song I want to talk about is a song called The Renegades of Funk, which is one that I still hear on the radio from time to time, which is interesting that it's had such lasting power because the lyrics are, to put it plainly, really stupid. And they just kind of list situations and periods of time and political movements and things like that without really connecting them too much. And then the hook kind of suggests that this band Rage Against the Machine is sort of revolutionizing funk or music derived from funk or something like that. And I choose this as an example because it's sort of a particularly... Um, egregious might be the word or clear example of a, a trend in a lot of rock music and punk music to make sort of really simple statements that on their surface aren't really saying anything but still developing a sense of political power and expediency through the sort of affect and the tone of the music and also the lyrics and some other songs that come to mind that do this in maybe a slightly better way are uh, maybe God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols, which also makes pretty simple statements, but it does it in such a wonderfully snarky way that it, it has a lot of power, or even Higher Ground by Stevie Wonder, which also makes a lot of kind of simple, obvious statements that if you were to write them in kind of a prose or essay context, wouldn't really amount to much. But the way he does it, comes up with both uh, sort of critical but also positive and uh, hopeful view of the future. So one last example to end my discussion today is the rapper Vince Staples. What I find particularly powerful about Vince Staples is how nuanced of a picture he's able to paint with his, with his raps because um, he does make pretty strong political statements regarding police brutality and the violence of the justice system towards black communities, but he also talks about interpersonal relationships. He also talks about gang violence and gang culture and being involved. So one of his songs uh, called Hands Up delves into some of these issues of police brutality and or how the justice system is stacked against black communities, specifically in South LA County, Compton, North Long Beach, areas like that. Um, and he gives a pretty thought-provoking point of view about how that also then relates to gang activities and cultures in those same areas. Thanks for watching Music in Mind this week. I'm Anthony Calkins. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, please share it, please subscribe. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your reactions to the videos I'm making or if you have any ideas for topics in the future or if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment below. 
And if you really like my work, please consider visiting my Patreon page with the link below. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.